Uh, in this video, I'll show you how to create a line chart with uh, column markers. So you may see these type of charts in newspapers where, where they have a line chart. This kind of charts the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed on the first of every month from uh, 2000 during 2000 to January 2006. And we have this marker here that shows uh, this big dip here for, of the Dow Jones. And we have this marker here, this gray marker here that shows the Great Recession from December 2007 to June uh, 2009. Uh, there's other areas where there were uh, minor recessions uh, in this time period and that was between, uh, let's see, I think it was March. We have a dip here, so there was a, a small recession here between uh, March 2001 and November 2001. I can actually mark that here. So I can go and uh, indicate there was a recession here. So let's see, March 2001 to Let's see, November. I can actually just do it here. Since I have a filter here, let me go ahead and filter those dates. Uh, be, date filter between March 1st, 2001 and November 1st, 2001. Right? So I'll click OK and it will give me those dates. I'm going to go ahead and select those dates and put a Y for yes, there was a recession. Control Enter and it will enter that in all the cells I selected, control Y. And now we have our marker here set up. And now we have a marker that indicates there was a recession in this time period. Let me go ahead and unfilter this. And since we have the setup here, now if I have any other, da other dates to enter before or after these dates, I can enter them there. And if I want to do uh, Dow Jones versus some other type of category, not recessions, or some other type of events, I can just add it here. I can just change that and indicate a yes, and those markers will show up. And basically what this marker does is it just gives a max. So I already created the chart. The maximum was around 20,000. So I just indicated in the formula here 20,000. Let me go ahead and show you how I created this chart. It's actually fairly easy. This is called a combination chart. Basically it's combining a line chart and an area chart. I'm going to go ahead and create another sheet here. And let me go ahead and just copy the date and the closing price here. Control shift down arrow to select everything. Control C to copy. Let me go into sheet three here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just do control V to paste. Now I've pasted that data in there. Now with this already set up, what I can do is I can just create my line chart. So I'm going to go insert and insert a line chart here. All right, I've got it set up here. Now what I need to do is I want to create the other two cells here, the other two column cells or range of cells for my marker. So here, since we're doing recessions, I'll just call this recession. I'll just give it recession and question mark. Right, and I'm going to do on this line, these, this is my marker column. Initially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an, an NA here. So there actually is a function in Excel called NA. So I'm going to type equal NA, uh, select that, press enter, and I'm going to go ahead and click the um, double click the fill handle here. It's going to copy that formula all the way down. So what this is is just a placeholder. Either I'm going to have an NA or I'm going to have a Y for yes. And it will help in my function here that I'm going to create in column D. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to indicate with this marker if the value in column C is yes, then I'm going to use a value for that marker. And if it's if it's not yes, basically it's NA, I'll just use the NA that comes from here. With values that are NA in charts, they don't, they don't get charted. So anytime you have a value, because the chart is expecting a numerical value. Now if you have an NA, it just doesn't chart that thing. And that's why we have the value NA here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write an if function. So we see that my highest point here is 2000. Excel kind of calculated this out based on the range of values here. So what I'm going to do is type equal if this value equals, I'm going to put Y because Y would indicate uh, basically where the recession occurred in the range of dates here. So if that's a Y, then what I'm going to do is put 2000 because that's going to be the highest point here that I want that marker to show up. And if it's not, just, recall, just call this cell C2 and it's going to bring back NA. Close parentheses, press enter, and we have an NA here. So I'll go ahead and kind of drop this down. Also double click that to drop it down. So the function is set up here for me to put in here. 
So what I want to do is I want to select this marker column. Go ahead and select that. Control Shift down arrow to select everything. Control C to copy. Let me go back up here. And I can just paste it into the chart. Control V to paste. Now after I copied it into my chart area, I copied it in as a line chart. And then my first chart here is a line chart, which I want. But this other one, I don't want it as a line chart. I want it as a different type of chart. So I can select this. Uh, you can see after I select it, I only selected one point here. Let me go ahead and select other areas. It selected only one point. So if I made any changes, maybe it only be to that one point. But that's OK. If I selected that one point, I can actually go into the chart tools here and then change the chart type. Click on change chart type. And what I want to do is I want to change the marker chart type, not from a line to an area chart. So I want to change it to an area chart. Click that. And now you can see my preview here shows it correctly. So this is kind of nice. So what I'm going to do is click OK. And the rest of it is now formatting. I don't want this orange bar. I want something a little bit more subdued. And I can just go ahead and click that. Right click. I can go into Format Data Series. Or actually, I can even go under here because I have this little mini ribbon here. So I can select the fill to be gray. I can select this drop down. It gives me different colors. But I'm going to choose a very subdued gray here. And then the outline, I don't really need an outline, so I chose no outline here. And just click outside of it, and I have my area here which shows the marker for the recession. So the early 2000 recession here from March 2001 to 11 2001. So later on, of course, we have another recession, the Great Recession between uh, 2007 2009. I have to enter in my yeses here. What I can do is I can sort it. I can, I can turn on the sort and filter capabilities. And I can go ahead and click on the date and sort these date filters between, I believe, the Great Recession. The Great Recession was uh, between 12-1-2007, and it ended at uh, June, the June time period, June 2009. Press OK. And now we have uh, this time period here where I can enter all yeses. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And I can go ahead and enter yeses here. But you notice that when I filter this, the chart disappeared. So if I didn't want that to disappear and I wanted to kind of show it while I was entering data, uh, there is a way that we can fix that. Let me go ahead and get out of this filter first. So you can see I, after I filtered it, the whole chart disappeared. Let me go ahead and unfilter this and go ahead and click on the chart. And then I'll go under Format and under Size. Let me go ahead and click and expand this. And what I want to do is under the Properties, I don't want to move or size with the cells. And basically, um, what it does is if this all, if the cells, when I filter it, the cells are actually moving and it won't move or resize. So I'll go ahead and close that. Let me go back into my date filter and go between March, whoops, no, no, that was December 1st, 2007, and June 1st, 2009. Press enter. And you notice now that what has happened is my chart stays there, uh, but my data seems to have disappeared, or it seems to have done something funny. And the reason why I did that is because it's only showing data for this range of date. It's not showing my data from 2000 to 2016. And we can also do another change here, because uh, in effect, the other data is hidden, and the chart does not show hidden data. So what I can do is I can select on the chart and go under uh, Design and under Select Data, what I can do is I want to check this hidden and empty cells button, and I want to show data in hidden rows and columns, basically because my filter has hidden them. And I want to show those hidden parts. And after I select on that, you can see my chart retains its original setting without the hidden stuff. So I click OK. Let me go ahead and click OK to get out of that. And now I have my full chart. And it won't really do anything. Uh, respective of the uh, filtering here. So I can do filter all I want, and now it will just show the action there. So I've got this filtered for 2007, 2009. Under the recession, I can click uh, select that range of data, and then press Y, and then press Control, Enter, and it will put the Y in all the cells that I've selected. And now you see I have my marker for the other area where it shows the Great Recession between 2007 and 2009. Now the rest of it is just probably clean up. I can just go ahead and take these lines and press Delete if I didn't want those grid lines. If I wanted a title, I can add a title here and go under Chart Title. And I can just put, uh, select that, Dow Jones Industrial Average and Recessions. Right? 
And then I have my chart. This is basically a combination chart. Uh, we've got our line chart here combined with an area chart that shows markers for significant time periods here. So later on, I can actually enter uh, additional dates. And uh, if there's additional recessions, hopefully not, we can enter that there. We can change the formula if, if uh, the market's going up and there's a new high, I can change that to uh, 25 hundred or twenty five thousand or thirty thousand uh, and that will adjust accordingly I can just copy the formula up or down and it will uh, adjust accordingly so that's how we can create a line chart with column markers basically a combination chart so I hope that helps thanks for watching mm -hmm.